how do you run if you have strong supination? That's a question I had to ask myself. Watch on to find out how I managed it. Hi, I'm Will from Iron Will Multisport Australia, your place to find tips, tricks, and experience in triathlons, multisport, and endurance events and training. Every human body is different. Everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. The way that your foot naturally lands differs between person to person as well. Some people have a natural sort of landing style where they land along the center of the foot. Other people overpronate, which means they put the weight on the inside of the foot, they land like this. And some people, like myself, supinate. So that's where you put the weight on the outside of your foot. These are typically people who have a high arch, and that looks like that. I am a supinator. Kind of makes me sound like a superhero, the supinator. But unfortunately, it comes with a few side effects. In 2011, I was becoming increasingly, I'd say, obsessed with running. I had planned myself for that year to do a few long runs. First started with the Canberra Marathon, then I was going to do the Sydney Half Marathon, the Blackmores Full Marathon. It was going to be a big year. A couple of months into training, I felt a bit of a pain in my foot. I went to see a podiatrist and it turned out that I had plantar fasciitis. And so this was most possibly caused by my tendency to supinate. Their advice was to find a shoe which would help correct my supination. So they recommended to go to a shop like Athlete's Foot, one of the uh, athletic shoe stores we've got here in Australia, and to ask for advice on what shoe to get. This shop recommended that I get a shoe that rolled my foot inwards as I landed, this way trying to roll my foot away from supination. I thought, hey, great idea. Let's buy this. Let's spend $200 on these shoes. Yay! Although it turns out that wasn't quite the best way to treat my supination. Now the problem I found with purchasing corrective shoes that rolled my feet away from their normal landing style meant that the forces along my leg were all in weird planes. The day of the Canberra Marathon came about and I was feeling great. I was ready to go. I had some painkillers ready just in case my plantar fasciitis kicked in so that I could numb that pain and keep running. That's a bad idea too. The run went great. I got under four hours, so three hours 52 I think it was, or 53. Although about a week after this run, I started to notice a bit of a niggle in my knee as I was going down the stairs in my apartment. This tended to be a bit more painful as I was going downstairs or down slopes in general, and it started to get worse and worse. I had iliotibial band syndrome. That 42 kilometers running on hard surface in the rain too, with overcorrective shoes that made the forces go up my legs and into my knee all off balance, caused my IT band, which is this band along sort of the side of the leg, to be inflamed and in pain. Have any of you had IT band syndrome? Let me know in the comments below. So it was about three months before I was properly walking again and about three years until I started even trying to run again. And in 2014, when I went back to running again, I ended up getting IT band syndrome again. I didn't change anything. I got shoes that were very similar and yeah, managed to get the problem again in the same knee. Fast forward to 2017, I decided to run a marathon again, but this time I changed my running style via changing my shoes with the hopes that I could hopefully get away without injury this time. At the 2017 Blackmore's Sydney Marathon, I finished with a time of three hours, 50 and 37 seconds, which is a personal best for me. And I also set the Guinness World Record title for fastest marathon run in a Kung Fu uniform, running in Kung Fu slippers. Let's check out that tiny sole. There's not much of anything there a week after the race, and then even a month after the race. I felt nothing. I didn't have IT band syndrome or any injury. I was injury free. So how come when I was running in corrective shoes, I managed to injure myself, whereas when I ran in pretty much nothing, I got away injury free? Well, there are a couple of things at play here. One of the main ones I think was my reliance on the shoe to do the work for me. The first, uh, the corrective shoes that I wore when I got IT band syndrome had a very stiff and a very wide sole meant to correct how your foot landed and roll it away from supination. And the problem with this is that it's very hard to change how your foot lands. 
and unfortunately rolling it away from where it naturally lands means that you're making the forces go in all different directions and they end up causing damage. Also the shoes had a very large heel, a lot of padding in the heel. I wasn't a particularly great runner so this promoted me to do heel striking and also try to tend to do way too long strides, landing well in front of my center of mass. By going to a shoe with pretty much no padding and with a very flexible sole, I quickly learned how important it is to run landing on your fore or mid foot. And as such, my foot made its own corrections. And also by landing with this mid foot, my feet were able to act as a spring and actually dampen the forces and stop the forces from going all the way through my knees. They were able to distribute through the leg naturally as they are supposed to. So I was now landing lighter, taking more strides, having a higher cadence, landing under my center of mass, so under the actual center of gravity of the body, and injuring myself less. Now, softer soled shoes and minimal shoes in general aren't for everyone. There is definitely a place for padding, there is definitely a place for harder soles. But in my case, I needed those to be stripped away so that I could properly focus on my running form and fix it. And also, transitioning to minimal type shoes isn't going to be a straightaway thing. It's not something which you can just overnight change to minimal shoes, change to a zero drop, change to no cushioning, and just run as you were normally. You definitely need to take some time, so make sure you start out with shorter, easier distances before you make your way up to those longer running distances again. You may be new to running, or maybe you've been running in regular shoes with lots of padding, or maybe you've been running in high heel shoes, the shoes with lots of drop. These might mean that your legs just aren't physically ready to be running with minimalist shoes at long distances just yet. Uh, your Achilles, your calf muscles need lengthening, they need to gain some elasticity in them before you can be getting those longer distances. So it's also a really good idea to start running on softer surfaces. And you want to make sure that you are warming up and down. This is very important. Make sure you're doing lots of stretches along your calf, your Achilles, your feet, your legs in general. I didn't only use the Kung Fu slippers in my running. I also used, and I know they're ugly, the Vibram Five Fingers. So those toe shoes. Yes, they look like you're wearing gorilla's toes or frog's feet but they were really good, like they were excellent in fixing up my running style. And these Kung Fu slippers just wore out way too quickly. I'd always get rips and tears in the corners of them. If you have supination, I would strongly encourage you to give minimal running a go, whether this is barefoot or whether this is with minimal shoes, such as the Vibram Five Fingers, or with something even more minimal, up to your choice. The idea is to run in shoes that have a bit more of a flexible sole so that your feet can be doing the work. They can be landing properly. You can learn how to land properly. Learn how to actually make shorter strides, have a higher cadence, land under your, under your center of mass, land on your mid forefoot, and have a proper running stride. I'm not saying to go as minimal as these shoes, but the more minimal you can go, the better it, the easier it is for you to focus on your actual running style itself, rather than relying on the shoes. And you can do the focus on your running style in regular shoes as well. There's nothing particularly wrong about that. But I have found that it's harder for me to get into the habit when I'm running in regular shoes. I tried that to begin with, and I just found it really hard to change my style at all. I needed to just get rid of them to focus on my feet themselves. Now recently, since I am increasing my running amount in preparation for the full Ironman, I've changed to a new set of shoes. This is a bit closer to a regular sort of set of shoes, no longer going the minimalist, no longer going the Vibram Five Fingers. They are these ones, the Topo Flylight 2. They've got a three millimeter drop but they are very light, they're also quite flexible, and they've got a very wide toe box. And I've found that in these shoes, I'm still able to run in the same or similar sort of style as I was in my Vibram Five Fingers and in my Kung Fu Slippers. But that additional little bit of padding just helps distribute those forces from the long, long, long pounding. You know, long training sessions like 20k, 24k, 26k, 28k, 30 kilometer runs 
it just absorbs those forces a little bit more. So minimal shoes, great for shorter distances. If you can do them for longer distances, that's great. But if you do need to go into something with a little bit more padding, just make sure that it's something with a bit of a flexible sole with as little a drop as possible and so that you can run in a four or midfoot style. And for the shoes that I've mentioned in this video, as many as possible, I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below, so check them out. I still have a really strong supination. That's not something that's gonna go away. But by running in minimalist shoes and next to nothing shoes and Vibram Five Fingers and all of that sort of stuff, I've managed to fix my running style so that I can reduce the amount of injuries that I get. And I haven't had IT band syndrome since. Do you run with supination? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see triathlon content every week from here in Australia and New Zealand, then hit like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.